Pedro from AMP Reacts. I'm here today with uh, Clemens Weirs from Karak Engren. How's it going? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, just like I said, like uh, for me, not much has changed. I'm in the in the cabin with music instruments, and uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's strange situation. But uh, I'm uh, working on music, and uh, luckily have some projects to go on. So uh, yeah, everything cool. You're you're trying to stay busy in your quarantine and and staying away from uh, all the infected zombies out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of the songs is about it, but no. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was a kind of strange because one of the subjects on the album sort of connects a little bit to what's happening. So it was a kind of, I was like, okay, the album is done and what's happening now? Like a kind of strange, uh, surreal experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost like there was a little bit of a foresight in, in terms of predicting what the future was going to bring. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I I hope not because <laughs> 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 kids' music forever. <laughs> and and the first question I have for you is, where did the inspiration for this specific record came from? It was a bunch of things, but for me personally, it was really cool because it started with a with a nightmare. I had a a, a dream, like you know two years ago, a little over two years, and I was like floating in a house and it looked very classical from a classical era. I heard like dissonant piano tones and I was like pulled into this open space and I saw the, the painting of an old man and it looked very angry and I was pulled towards it. And then I woke up and I don't have a revengeful grandpa, so uh, I didn't know what the old man meant. But uh, so I, I sat down at the piano, tried to play what I heard, and I made a little drawing of what I saw, you know, and then I just moved on. And meanwhile, with Saragor, I was talking about Frankenstein, and he, he was very intrigued by it always because he connected to the movie as a child. And I never saw the movie really, so I was like, I, I really liked the idea. And then at the same time, I felt like this has been done so much already in popular culture the nuts and bolts and the monster. And so I felt like we need an original angle and I had no clue. So I was working on music and then I read the book by Mary Shelley and uh, I was super fascinated, blown away because the book has so much depth and uh, emotional substance that a lot of movies uh, about Frankenstein don't have. And, and it's also to be fair, hard to communicate that through a movie, but I was fascinated. So I, started to get really uh, inspired and um, did some research like where did Mary Shelley get her inspiration and then I stumbled upon this guy called Johan Konrad Dippel who seemed to be like a real Victor Frankenstein that not many people know about. He lived at Castle Frankenstein and he was a theologian and uh, but also an alchemist. He did experiments on animals like gruesome stuff. He was living in the transition from alchemy to you know more modern science and um, I started googling him and then this image turned up and he looked exactly like the guy I saw in the dream so I had like personal wow. uh, motivation there so that you know and I think you always need that as an artist like that something pulls you because if you say I'm gonna make an album about this okay great but you, you need something that that draws you in so this is how it started and then both of us were you know, very excited about the team and uh, the whole process began. Yeah, yeah. you have to have something that drives you forward. You know, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying to me, you know, one thing is for you to create an album that drives you, that you feel a deep connection to it. The other thing is to create an album about dishwashers. You know what I mean? And you don't know nothing about dishwashers. It, it, it makes the job very difficult. Yeah, then you have in order you have this uh, this quote saying like it's better that something pulls you than that you have to push yourself. And mm -hmm. if something pulls you, you don't have to push because you wake up, you're excited, you're gonna sit down and write. Or and that's with everything in life, I think. But uh, sometimes it's hard to find that you have to work in order to connect with something, and suddenly it happens. And uh, luckily, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> for for, the, for this album, once you guys had that idea, once you guys decided, okay, Frankenstein. This is the 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 skeleton of of our of our concept for this record. How then you uh, attack the creation of the actual album? How do you break it down? What is the process to then start working on the tracks? Well, I was already working on some some things, and not everything was as good. So a lot of it was just thrown away or like sketchbook material. 
And because, you know, after five albums, we, we know a little bit like what's the direction with Kerouac because you, you're not going to change it overnight into something else. But I was also working on industrial sounds at that time. It was the same time that I did my little uh, solo oh. release. So I, I was also a little bit tired of the orchestral stuff myself. So I needed a little exit. So I was like playing around with all of that. And um, there was a little crossover happening because one of the songs on the album I originally had maybe intended for the solo album, but I sent it to Dennis, to Sarah, and I said, what do you think? And his first response was, no, no, it's too industrial, we're not going to use it. And then he tried some vocals on it anyway, and he sent it back, and then we, we were on the phone like, this is amazing, and that became the title track. So, yeah, th we were just tiptoeing around and seeing what excited us and, and funny enough there were a lot of new things that excited us because it's fresh as artists you know but we also aware like we need something that um that is still karak and um so it was complicated in the beginning also because we decided about dipple that this would be the main character but dipple doesn't sound very sexy <laughs> so uh, you're not gonna call the album like that so <laughs> We didn't, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. think you would sell a lot of records. <laughs> Simple, yeah. So and we were making a little bit fun. So and so, but this is with with a concept album always the case. Sometimes you have it immediately, all of it, and that sometimes there's a puzzle. So you're like clo you know closing it in, and um, so actually it became like a two year process almost of just like going back and forth, developing more material playing around with it, uh, making different songs. Also, Dennis was researching, for example, this uh, guy called uh, Kuno Hoffman, the Vampire von Nuremberg, who was a serial killer, uh, necrophiliac, and he actually is still alive, I heard. But so he was like, OK, but I'm doing this. What do you think? Can we use that? I said, yeah, it's great. I don't know how we're going to do it, but that's just go on and uh, not restrict ourselves and in the end we made uh, all kinds of connections so we have a couple of sub stories on the album connected with the overarching story about you know uh, dipple's drive to create the elixir of life that's basically at the heart of this and, uh, and and i think in the end it all came together but it was only after several months and uh, work so yeah that's a uh, I, i'm going to tell you I, I had a hell of a time pronouncing the title of, of the record like i was like how do you how do you pronounce it? Frankenstein like the the first one was easy but the second one like it, it drove me crazy I, yeah. I think I had to re-record the review uh 10 times so I could get the and I don't even know if I still got the pronunciation correctly his hidden promotion because you repeated it and then it's your mind <laughs> marketing genius I mean, you guys are, are marketing geniuses. By creating a name that it's so complicated, forces people to read it over and over again. Exactly. Yeah. Then you can't you can't forget it. It sort of happened with the band name. We were not aware of it, but people were constantly, like, "What is it like? And how is it pronounced?" But it created a kind of mystery around it. So it's kind of cool. There. Yeah. Uh, did this album offer you? I mean, you guys have done so many albums before, but has this album offer you uh, any special? difficulties any special challenges that you guys you guys hadn't faced in previous albums well one of the difficult things is that um the, the band over the recent years has become more and more uh, our main uh yeah job or main uh thing and so we we toured a lot which is really great but at some point uh you also need some time away from it to, in order to get a fresh perspective and it's always what it's like i started to, to if you play a couple of shows every year, then it's easier to to create a new album. But if you are months and months playing this kind of music and in this kind of vibe, and then to come home, take a few days break and, and go back into this, the risk is that you start repeating yourself and the risk is also that you get a little bit yeah, bored or uninspired. So I knew from the beginning, like we were discussing with management and everything, like, are we going to do a new album in 2019? There, there was a possibility because there was material and we could have, you know, pushed it a little. But then at the same time, I felt like we, we felt like let's push it another year just to make it better and just to give it some time. And I think we we did that well because it's always with bands. It's uh, um, how, do you say, how do you say that? It's alluring to uh, to just keep going, you know, for the business, just 
crank out another album, go on tour again. And uh, because if you skip a year, so to speak, you miss the festival season, all of that. But we just try to ignore that and just take time and make a great album uh, that we really like. And uh, so, yeah, that was the challenge. And I think we did that. Yeah. yeah. I, I have to ask you this and feel free to tell me that I'm an idiot. But when I was listening to the album, I felt that this album is breaking down into three elements. The drums are the heartbeat. The keyboards and orchestration is the soul. And then the vocals is the vessel. You put all of those three together. You have the Frankenstein monster. So musically, the That's album... The album to me musically uh, felt the same way as the monster. It's built with the three main different pieces that then create the whole thing. So I felt that you guys created an album that really matched the concept to how it was put together. Is this something that you could agree with or or I'm or I'm completely a, a lunatic? I like it. It's a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, it's a perfect analogy, really, yeah. I haven't thought about it, but yeah, I, I think also the the, the mix really um, how do you say that adds to this because we had a new guy mixing it. I really like this guy, Robert Carranza, who who did uh, Marilyn Manson's albums, and I, I really wanted a different approach for this because um, not a typical metal kind of song, but I wanted something more cinematic, and I thought that he had the know how to to how to build this all together. And uh, so I'm very excited about that. And I think he just nailed it. But that contributed a lot to how the overall production is, uh, I think. And uh, but you're right, like all these elements are very existent. And, you know, I, for my part, I spend a lot of time on the keyboards and the orchestra and like the, the yeah, the, the spooky stuff. And uh, yeah, so you're OK with great. that. I'm very OK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the record paints i mean every record you guys release in my opinion paints a vivid picture you you, you it's almost becomes an audio book if you will or or uh, an, an, a way of, of watching a movie without watching it just by listening to the to the lyrics just by listening to the music you guys are really able to bring the story to life uh, what's the correct anger and secret like, like how are you guys able to grab these really convoluted stories, like really dark stories, take them in all these different paths and, and be able to allow the music to, to bring them to life to, to whoever it is that it's listening to it. Thank you, first of all. And, and I think that is, yeah, exactly what we try to do. So, like I said, that's why it takes a lot of time to get inspired, like in spirit, because you have to have the movie in your mind, basically, before you start making it or working towards it, both on, on lyrics and music. So if you take, for example, the one of the opening songs about the, the boy that gets sick and comes back from the grave, you, you I literally see that happen. I see the boy, I see the church, I, see the, I hear the bells ringing. And then you sit at the keyboard, basically, or you write, and it happens. And then so if the, the listener listens to the music, hopefully the other thing happens back in the mind. So it's like a transition. So, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's the secret, if you would call it, because I really like to compose to something. And uh, if you have like a movie and you see it, you can, I can easily score to it. That's something that comes natural. But if it's not there, I need something, an image in my mind or a story or, and Saragor as well. So with writing lyrics. And I think that's the, the way we work. And, um, and that's also when we can tell that it's not working because, uh, you know, sometimes it's like, ah, it's not there. And then you wait or you throw it away or you begin again. Yeah. And that's also a challenge because it's not very easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, do, you, do you feel like that's a specific characteristic that you guys have been able to harness over the years that you guys have specific to the band? Yeah, I think um, this is the uh, trademark of the band to do this way. And um, and uh, yeah, I really like it. And I think we've become better at it every time. Mm -hmm. I hope we can keep doing it a lot. And it's cool because every time you can tackle a different story, but it's also a huge undertaking. It's not like, uh, yeah, let's make a dishwasher song <laughs> <laughs> to end the analogy. But yeah, sometimes that's also cool, but we try to not do that in Karak Angren, but maybe different bands or projects or whatever. Yeah. 
I, I really like the also the introduction in terms of having a narrator telling the introduction to the record and then how how it bleeds from the intro track into the next track. It, it allows the album to just have and you you can feel that going forward as you go through the album. Not necessarily that the songs all bleed one into the other, but there's always this perfect sequence that just just takes you from the first track and then you're stuck into that story and you and you're not pausing it until you get all the way to the end and you see what happens. That's cool to hear, yeah, yeah. Because in the end, this is always a challenge. Like you want the story to to fit, but at the same time, you want the individual songs to be cool, and you want the in the order, the sequence to yeah. to make long. So it's sometimes it's like a three dimensional, like the Ruby Cube, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it kind of felt like like for me from an outsider's perspective, listening to the album, I can see the amount of work that goes into it because there's so many different moving pieces that all have to all have to line up perfectly in order for the record to work the way you guys want it to work. Yeah, yeah, I can give you an example. I think in the last couple of weeks we even changed the track list. Oh, you did? One, yeah, because it felt better, but then we were like analyzing the lyrics like, okay, okay, does this work there? Yeah, and then we also, because the end of the album ends with um, Mr. Dipple uh, achieving you know, the creation of the elixir of life, so he becomes immortal. But then we had the idea, what if he becomes immortal, but his flesh still rots away? And his spirit is sort of immortal, but is bound to the place where he, where his flesh was rotting away. So he has to find the new host. Mm -hmm. And this is the boy. That's how the end connects to the beginning of the album. But <laughs> we were like in the lyrics, okay, but his, his flesh has to rot away. And there it says the spirit is rotting away. So we have to change that. So it's sometimes it's really, it's like almost scientific or something. But because it has to make sense on all these levels. And sometimes you have a new idea and you have to go back in the script basically to to change the lyrics. And uh, But that's also cool. You know, like, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a, a work in progress until it's completely completed. And even when it's completely completed, you yeah. know, there's still those doubts that creep into your mind that you you still feel like you can do something a little bit better in order to push the album forward. Yeah. And what is also funny, sometimes with albums, I felt like, yeah, I don't know if people will get this. I don't know. This was a bit fake. And then people say, oh, amazing. And we got it. And then sometimes I feel like this is so clear. And then everyone's like, this is not a concept album, right? I'm, oh, God. <laughs> 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 so, there's yeah. also like of your own perspective and your own mind sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw the title of the album, I was like, oh, these guys are going to go down with, with Frankenstein. Like like you said earlier, this has been done a million times before. Same thing with vampire movies, right? I mean, like it, it's it's done ad nauseum. So I'm like, okay, if they're going to go down this road, they're going to throw something at us that we haven't seen before. I highly doubt it that they're just going to go with the original story of Frankenstein and that's it because I, I, don't, I don't see the motivation for you guys to create an album about that that would be just that linear that would, that would be just that simple it's not in your dna no exactly it would be would be hard yeah and also not completely fair to the fans i feel and to ourselves to just yeah there's no depth it's like okay here it is uh, done <laughs> yeah. I, I have to ask you this because the the first before i heard the album i heard the singles and i i, I didn't connect with the singles that much i mean i like the songs but I don't know. I felt like something was missing. I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, wow, man, I was kind of expecting a little bit more. I, I, I liked it. It's, it's okay. You know, then I heard the album and I was like, holy shit, these songs don't even sound the same as they did when I heard them on their own. In the context of the album, those, the singles become much bigger tracks because they become part of that story that, that you're, that you're, that you're captivated by. It, it, is, is it hard for you guys to grab songs out of a record like this and make them into singles, knowing that you're taking one portion of the story out and, and, and the, the listener is going to get that portion out of context in terms of the whole scheme of the album? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and every time it becomes more <laughs> difficult, but this time it was, it was really like that. But like I said, for example, Monster is for us. Is, is one of our favorite songs because we had a lot of fun recording it with, with, with Dennis with his vocals here. You know, I still see him standing there like it's uh, you know, and like so we had a lot of fun. And also we have always very complicated song structures. 
and and basically that's our easy way like a song like the vampire is more easy for us to do because it's Karak Angla and then Monster where there's like the beat of it is very um, simple in that sense but it, it's but it has to survive you know you can so there's little elements and we had a lot of fun with that so we are excited about a song like but at the same time we know like the, the there are fans that probably think what the hell is this again <laughs> you know <laughs> so it, it, out of the album and present it like this is the first thing we know that and but we still do it because we feel like yeah we are excited but this is the challenge and also um with us because there's so much atmosphere the the the, the, the whole booklet the whole album as a whole it draws you in like you say and then you pick one thing out you put it on youtube you know in in, in a format that everyone is, is looking at other songs and stuff and then yeah you lose some of the the magic in that transition but yeah, I'm I'm fairly confident that people will just also um, check out the whole album, and uh, but it's tough, yeah, because what song? Yeah, every time we had to pick another one now, and it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Like when I went through the album, I'm like, I, I was thinking to myself, these guys when they go on the road, when this whole COVID thing is finished, they go on the road. You, you guys almost should. I mean, every album you guys have has those difficulties, but for some reason, I feel like this album is one of those that you really need to listen to it from beginning to end. And, and like yeah. I said, I, I believe every album that you guys have released falls under that category. But for some reason, I, I can't put my finger on it, but this one I felt even more so that for you to really get not only the story, but for you to really understand the sound, the music, you really need to listen to it in sequence. So I was, yeah. when I was listening to it, I was thinking, man, when these guys go on the road, are, are they going to play this this album beginning to end? Because that would be absolutely epic or, or are you still going to mix some of the songs into your set list and, and and go down the regular path i don't know it's a great idea actually and um what i was thinking like this album i think it's the one we worked the most on in the longest time and also the mix took like two months so what happened is every song got like a very special treatment like maybe more than maybe 10 days of mixing like and like you know every detail over and over again so it's like also uh, like microscopic uh, <laughs> Frankenstein. But uh, <laughs> so in the end, that resulted in very, very detailed end results per track. But this also leads to uh, a very cohesive album that you have to listen in a whole. Like sometimes albums get mixed fairly easy and, and more in, in a broad view. Like you make the drums for every uh, track the same. You take the guitars, every track the same. Here, everything is a little bit different for every track. And that's why I think it fits together in the whole, but maybe as individual songs, it's kind of a challenge. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, I, but, I, yeah. I, I mean, it's just an idea. I thought that this album, because of, of the way it flows, it, you could almost make a concept tour surrounding the, the record because the, 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 the songs have so much energy and the way they go from song to song, it, it, it's almost like you have an album that is just one song. It's just, it's divided into different chapters. It would be a great idea. It would be, maybe, yeah. I like it. So. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I, as a fan, I would like to see something like that. I think it would be really cool. Or, or yeah. maybe because now we're in quarantine, maybe you guys decide to do a live stream down the line and you would do a live stream a performance of just the album and incorporate the storytelling into that live stream. Maybe something like that. I think it would be cool. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, it's it's a great idea. Yeah, and I think the, this album, for some reason, indeed lends itself for it, because there's a nice pace yeah. throughout it. Yeah. And, and I have to ask you about the violin solos. They were absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Like just like the, the atmosphere that they add to the songs. They add melody, but they also add this really dark, somber like feel to it. Uh, was it was it your idea to to have those in there? I usually want, like, uh, the guy who played them and recorded them is Nikos Mavridis from Greece. He has been on every album since. He got introduced to us, like, uh, via Patrick Damiani. It's a guy who, who we always work with. So there's a great teamwork there. And he's a magnificent player, and he really feels the way I would like this violin to sound. But, for example, the song Soon for Solitude is a very emotional track because it's basically, you know, the confessions of this monster or... That has to hide and isn't recognized and is, is lonely. 
so I think it's something that people can connect with. And I wanted this song to have some kind of a fragile heart. And that's why there are some clean vocals, but also the violin, you know, and his playing would be perfect for it. So, and he just nailed it because, you know, I played a line and it's just samples and stuff. And then I send it and it comes back alive, you know. And, I, I, uh, I'm telling you, that's that's one of my favorite songs on the album because I just, it, it, it gives you goosebumps. Like the, the, the melody is so dark, so haunting. And the way it, it flows through through the track itself is just, uh, un unbelievable song, unbelievable track. Cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It turned out really great, I think. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it, it adds, like I said, it doesn't just add melody. It, it adds, it, it adds a certain atmosphere, a certain ambiance to to, yeah. to the album that I really feel like it elevates the tracks. It, it, it makes the story feel more real, and it really puts the story into the into the era that the story is in, because you can start. To, to almost see where the characters are when you hear those violins. It just allows the song to come to life. Yeah, yeah. And that's cool with this story that you have different eras because one song is, for example, in World War II. And this one, I wanted this classical kind of approach and maybe you know, 200 years ago and really like a, a monster that has to hide. And the violin really contributes to it. And in the outro as well. And... Uh, but yeah, I really love to play, to, to work with him together. And uh, I'm working on a project with Patrick and with Nikos together right now. And uh, we're doing a lot of real violins again. And it's really awesome stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Just incredible. Hey, I have to ask you this question because it, I, I, it would be remissive of me if I don't ask you this. Uh, with, with Nemtar working on the drums on this record and then leaving the band, uh, how did that play for you? Like, is this album a little bit of a, of a bittersweet uh, record because, it, you know, he worked on it, but now he's not going to be there to perform it with you guys live? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, he recorded it. And uh, soon after, we started to get more uh, touring options. And um, we had some talks about it because regularly we would decide over these things more together in the business. And he, he started saying, like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I don't know. And I started to sense like something's maybe not wrong. So we, we had a sit down and then he immediately he came out like, yeah, I'm, I want to get out and uh, I'm done. And uh, so we were in a way shocked because we didn't see it coming. And we had a couple of talks um, and we also offered him to, um, to get some time off, like take a sabbatical for a year. We'll fix it. You get perspective and you come back or not. But we said like this is 17 years you don't throw that away like that just mm -hmm. you know if you i said if i would have to have a sabbatical i hope you guys would offer me the the possibility as well but he was very uh, he was very uh, sure about his decision immediately so that was very difficult it was already in november and so we had yeah it was a rough time because we were like in the middle of the recordings and you also have to know like the, the record label really uh, pushed this record and, and we had some people uh, really uh, believing in us like okay they're going in the next step so we were super excited and I was like oh my god like besides what it means personally also like okay but what is this gonna mean you know for the band as a whole but um, yeah we decided to go to the 70,000 tons of metal anyway because also it was something we wanted to do and uh, we found Michiel as a replacement uh, and he did a killer job. He nailed the set list in a couple of weeks and uh, that gave me and, 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 and Dennis also the feeling like, hey, this, uh, you know, we can go on like this and uh, we felt good about it. It's sad, but in retrospect, I can also see that he yeah, somehow lost the motivation over time, slowly, probably. And yeah, it is what it is. You have to respect that, you know, and if someone doesn't want to do it anymore, it's not going to work. You know, we tried to talk and we had some perspectives, you know, to, to try to change each other's view. But yeah, you cannot permanently change someone's mind. It has to come from someone uh, himself. So, But now I feel very strong about uh, just, you know, continuing. We have a strong life lineup. And it's really great. And after all of this is hopefully gone but uh, yeah. yeah and, and uh, will will the door remain open for him down the line like five years down the line ten years down the line he decides to to give it a shot again would you guys be 
welcoming or you know you you have yeah. a drummer and it's not fair yeah that's difficult you cannot really look into the future but what i can see now is that he doesn't want to do it anymore and he's very very clear on that so we took that as a no and we moved on basically so okay like this is it and he also told us i don't want to disappoint you later i have to be clear so okay then this is it then we have to make a decision and uh, so yeah so right now we are not thinking about that and yeah because else it would feel like oh maybe and then you also you kind know. of in limbo it would feel like you yeah. guys are yeah. yeah 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 like this yeah we had a lot of talks about because yeah for people this is fairly new but we were we had to work this out like how we're going to present this and also i was thinking maybe he still changes his mind after for example we play the cruise maybe he thinks shit i missed out you know <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fun this is fun yeah it was a lot of fun so but he didn't change his mind so then i also grew like okay then it's for real and uh, so we had our mo months of thinking and talking hours and you know feeling and uh, so yeah so now we are that's yeah, half a year later and we feel more confident plus for me it's very double because i was never never so excited about an album and dennis as well so we were like this is great we can't wait and and then this was like so weird, like it was like a split personality almost. Yeah. yeah, I can see that happening. And now with with this virus, you see your album being pushed back to June, it's supposed to come out in May. It's coming out now at the end of June. Uh, how, how are you guys looking at the promotion of this album going forward? Uh, because obviously touring, uh, I mean, the summer festival season is over, like everything is canceled. We don't even yeah. know when touring is going to be possible. Are, are you guys thinking of creative ways of, of interacting with the fans and, and promoting this album through this time until it's possible again for you guys to hit the road. Yeah. Well, we already started the promotion before. Some bands even postponed their albums till next year or indefinitely. And we had some talks with everyone and we said like, nah, let's continue, but we had to postpone it one month because of the physical products. You know, they were not in in time because of the delay. So, and I'm happy that we can continue and still release it because it also offers some kind of comfort maybe for people in this time. You know, everyone is at home and strange situation. Um, but Dennis and I, we had some talks and we felt like, I mean, first of all, the, you know, people are literally dying and sick. So we felt like, okay, this is a priority. So our thoughts were with that. First of all, like, okay, this is happening to everyone. So it's like a global thing. It's not that just that we are blocked in some kind of way, although it's sad. So we we said like, okay, let's wait and see where this is going. We still promote the album and I think, you know, it will do great. But of course we cannot do it the way we would like to do it in a normal situation, but there is no normal situation. And uh, that's kind of the, the thinking we had going. Uh, we have to see how this will develop. Um, you know, also with video clips, it's, it's kind of difficult right now uh, to make a video clip or yeah, how will you do it, etc. But um, we will push it, we'll release it and we'll yeah, we'll promote it as, as good as we can. And then, yeah, hopefully we can come back on the road as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to those days. I mean, you, you guys always put on a killer show and you guys are road warriors. Once you guys are on the road, you you, you don't come off the road. You. You, you you seem to to love the the buses so <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm looking forward to that uh, I want to thank you very much for your time today to talk about the record it was an absolute pleasure um, stay safe stay healthy best of luck with the release I think this album is gonna uh, be a hit with fans because it, it's it's really a magnificent record all around thanks a lot thanks again for the interview oh, always okay. great pleasure. And, uh, oh, stay thank safe you. as well. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to chat. It's always a pleasure. All right. Thanks.